to Mary and Gordon Connell Lethbridge Stewart. According to one account, he was an only child and was raised in Simla, India. He was sent to an English prep school. According to this source, Alastair's mother died after he left for England. Another account held that he was born in Cornwall, England with an older brother, James Lethbridge Stewart. His mother did not die as early according to this account. He was known among friends and family as Al. And Alistair Connell Hamish Lethbridge Stewart, the man he believed to be his grandfather. Alistair's brother and his friends created a group known as the Bledo Cadets. However, Alistair was not allowed to join as he was considered too young. When he kept following them, they would drop him in cowpats or drench him to make him stop. On one occasion, a seven-year-old Alistair went with his brother and friends to a park as his mother visited with friends. The other boys, all four years older than him, began jumping over a small gorge to impress a group of girls. They convinced him to try as well, but due to his underdeveloped legs he fell into the muddy ravine. In 1937, the cadets threatened to make Alistair stay overnight in the haunted Pengriffin Fugu. Henry Barnes, who had gone home early, was unaware this hadn't happened and went to the moors to warn the other cadets about a stranger spotted around there. He was then held prisoner by the man, escaped murderer Jim Kliske. When James took the cadets to find and rescue Henry, Alistair was taken along and helped alert the police, endearing him to the group. Later that year, Alistair, his brother and Raymond Phillips decided to sneak into the local abandoned house, called the Manor. There, they were approached by a haunting figure in dated clothing which rested his hand on James's head before his body fell apart. Running away, James told the other boys, including Henry Barnes, who was watching from afar, not to talk about it, an order which all of the boys but Raymond completely ignored. Afterwards, Alistair became a member of the cadets, a bittersweet fact as James became isolated, appearing to talk to an imaginary friend he called Maha, a manifestation of the great intelligence, hoping to reform itself. Months later, in January 1938, the cadets gathered at the disused barn at the Puckater farm to exchange presents which they had received for the holidays. Alistair was allowed to come by Raymond, due to Ray missing James as a friend. Outside the barn, James began explaining sign language to his brother, and furthermore how the cows near the barn appeared to be confused and trying to talk to a voice that wasn't talking to them. Ray asked James to explain what had been happening to him since they met the hollow man in the woods, but James said that he could explain it to neither Ray nor his brother before wandering off. James and Maha soon grew to be a burden to the family, and his mother had to be called in often to talk to the headmaster about him. Because of this, Alistair soon grew somewhat jealous of the attention that his brother was receiving from his mother. On the 20th of February, his birthday party was held. His actual birth date was two days later, but it was a school night and thus judged to be a poor time for a party, an event he looked forward to as it would finally be a day where his family would pay attention to him and not his brother. Despite this, a scene was created at the party where Alistair and his brother began arguing. Alistair said that Maha had destroyed their relationship, and that James's friend had made him someone other than the brother that he cared about. As their mother took James away, Alistair was left in tears, his birthday ruined. A week before James's birthday in the same year, his mother announced to the boys that their father would be returning home for the day to be with them. James did not want to see his father and ran into the woods. Alistair and Ray went to look for him and found him standing at the clearing over Golitha Falls. Crying, James said that Maha had come for Alistair and had meant to hurt him. He said that he should never have listened to the voice, and apologized for how he had been acting. The great intelligence then forced James to jump to his death, in an act of spite against Alistair for thwarting it in his later years. Alistair tried to retrieve his brother's body, but was too short to do so. The three were eventually found by a group of adults who had heard Ray's screams, which Ray did not remember making. For Christmas 1938, a fairly depressed Alistair and his family visited his grandfather's estate. His grandfather gave Alistair a box of toy soldiers and then asked, What do you want to be when you grow up? 